Hi, my name is Dr. Mandy Goldman, and this is this is Dr. Katie Crossland. And today we're going to talk to you about the responsibilities of a health educator and how that relates to the bachelor's degree in health studies. You might have had people ask you, well, what exactly does a health educator do? And that's what we thought we would talk to you about today is how this program prepares you professionally to be a health educator. So let's go ahead and get started. First off um, is the governing body, NCHEC, and that is the um, what oversees the health education profession. And um, with that, there is what's called the Certified Health Education Specialist, which is the CHESS, and that is an exam that you take. And within that, there are seven areas of responsibilities that you will follow, um, that we will cover throughout our program. And you can see here that there is area one, assessing needs, two, plan health education, three, implement health education, four, conduct evaluation and research, five, administer and manage health education, six, serve as a health education resource person, and seven, communicate and advocate for health and health education. And what we're going to do is go through each one of those different areas and how um, this program prepares you within each of those. Um, so just like I said, um, the Health Studies program aligns with the national responsibilities, which will then prepare you to take the national CHES exam, which I have the um, Master Certified Health Education Specialist, which is 10 years of experience plus a PhD, and Dr. Crossland has the certification Certified Health Education Specialist. So we both are certified and would highly recommend um, that hopefully at the end of your program that you will do this also um, because it definitely sets a standard of what you've accomplished during our degree program and it definitely makes you more marketable when looking for a job. So now Dr. Crossland is going to go over with you um, a couple of the different areas. Thanks, Dr. Goldman. Now, as uh, Dr. Goldman explained, there are seven responsibilities of a health educator, and they are divided into areas. And the first one is assessment. And this is a very important step, which is often skipped over because of the expense and the time that it, it requires, but that is often a mistake. Uh, if you would just imagine that you're a health educator, you're helping a population to live healthier lives, how do you know which area to focus on? How do you know what health issues are most pressing? Assessment is really the key. It will tell you... Uh, what health behaviors people are practicing and where they can improve and it would help guide you as you develop programs and give specific instruction to community members on how to live healthier lives. Some health educators, they might select health issues that they think are most pertinent. Uh, however, it is crucial to obtain the community's buy-in. So you want to get their um, support and get their, their input into health programs to find out what they think um, is most important. In the past, um, several years ago, I've worked in East Dallas as a community health educator, and we were developing a health program for a disadvantaged um, population, uh, but they were very supportive and very interested in improving their community which was great. And so the way we did assessments is we conducted interviews with community members within a community recreation center to find out what they thought about their health, their community's health. We conducted interviews and also surveys. In addition to having people weigh in, we, we took measurements. We um, looked at waist and hip uh, circumferences to get some anthropometric data. And we really um, tried to get an in-depth look into this, this community community and decided that exercise and nutrition were what the community was most interested in and also what we saw through the data. So that assessment really helped us with developing a program from there, which is actually area two is uh, program planning. So once you have uh, health issues identified, you then move into uh, developing some planned program activities. And that's really one of the keys to being a health educator is that you, you, it's all based on planning and, uh, making sure that activities are made for the community that you're focusing on. We don't just develop uh, cookie cutter 
if you will, programs, we try to really tailor it to a community. And so that's how the assessment really helps you uh, make something really um, compatible for the community you're working with. So when you're developing a program, you want to make sure you understand what topic you're focusing on. So let's just take an example, um, heart health in women. So let's say you're wanting to increase um, heart health awareness and knowledge. You could do that by discussing healthy eating habits. You could prov provide some healthy recipes or help women understand how to make their own recipes healthier. You could also encourage um, cardiovascular exercise to help their health overall and their sense of well-being and um, physical fitness. And so those are examples of goals and objectives. You make it really specific so you can help people understand where you're going with the program and how they um, are expected to improve. And this is all voluntary, right? We're not subjecting anyone to... Um, you know, changes and health educators really promote voluntary behavior change, and that's through making programs that are um, uh, based on marketing theory. So you're going to think of ways to engage people to make things really appealing to them. And um, as you see at the bottom, you know, that's all based on education theory and marketing and health literacy to making uh, the program really um, user friendly and based on um, your population's um, reading level and so forth. And so uh, those are the skills that you'll develop through um, the courses listed. So that's health communications. You know, that's a, a really, really good class on learning how to communicate with all different populations and using the appropriate methods to communicate. Um, and then, of course, program development. That's a key class in program planning. And then also health promotion, so that you're learning how to teach others how to live um, healthier lives. Okay, now moving on to area three. So you can see this is very sequential. We've talked about assessment, and then from there to program planning, and now we're at implementation. So that means that once you've developed your program, you understand your target audience and how to best reach them and, um, and work with them on improving their health, you're going to move into implementation. So uh, it's always good to pilot a program, and that means that you're going to just implement it on a smaller scale. Um, so let's say you were trying to reach all of Dallas. Well, you don't want to do that at first because you want to make sure that it's ready to go and there's no hiccups, so to speak. So you can uh, maybe pilot it in a neighborhood that's representative representative of Dallas, maybe you know uh, among 100 people instead of thousands. And that way you can then make any changes that need to be made based on evaluation. So um, you're going to, let's, let's just give an example. So let's say you're recruiting people to be in this program, you're using flyers. Well, you want to find out how many of the participants are si signing up because of flyers. Is that an effective way to market the program? And if you find out, no, people are hearing, hearing about it from different ways, well, that can help you understand how to best draw in your population and how to uh, recruit the, for the program. So you're going to uh, you know, think of a plan of action, and then from there you want to start measuring how well your uh, you know, how well your plan of action is actually turning out. So, and that also involves a timeline. So you want to know, um, you know, your exact start date. So let's say for this exercise program, you're going to start it after January since people are really motivated around that time of year. So you're going to have a timeline as to when you recruit participants, how you train your own volunteers and your program uh, leaders, and then when you actually uh, implement some of the, the trainings and the activities and so forth. So this is really just a planned um, planned effort and you're going to evaluate how well you're doing as each plan is uh, rolled out so you can then make changes. You're not going to you know, give a program for a whole year and not measure your effectiveness throughout the, the year because then you, you know, you'll maybe have missed chances to improve it along the way. And so, uh, you know, this is sometimes the hardest area to really focus on because we learn by doing, right? So uh, in your internship, you'll have an opportunity to uh, actually implement and work with other health educators who are in the field and see how they handle uh, rolling out programs. And you'll also learn more about developing timelines in grant writing class. So those are two key, two key classes in this program. 
And within those classes, you'll learn specific skills such as conflict resolution techniques. That you know that's bound to occur whenever you're training and uh, working with people, and as well as knowing how to handle a group. So, how do you handle a group um, class where you're teaching about healthy healthy eating, and people have different personalities, and you need to learn how to work with the dynamics that present themselves.